Tonight we're going to be talking about babies and how precious they are to us. And this is a picture of one of our new babies that we have in our family. We have a lot of babies in our family and they are very precious. Before I start, I want to pray with you about you being a baby. Dear Father God, we thank you that these boys and girls who are listening to me today were once a little baby in a mommy and daddy's arms and that they were so precious to those parents and that they still are. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to know how much value you put on a little child. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, we finished up on Wednesday night with the Joseph story. And Joseph's whole family has moved down into Egypt, and they're down there for such a long, long time, 430 years. And when they were down there, they multiplied. There were more and more and more and more and more of them. And um, Joseph and his brothers all died eventually. And um, the king who knew and loved Joseph died. And a new king came who had never heard about Joseph, who didn't like the Israelite people, and who were, was afraid that the Israelite people were becoming so numerous. There were so many of them that if there was ever a war, they would join with the enemies and they would escape and they wouldn't be slaves to the Egyptians any longer. So his plan was to be really mean to God's people. He was really tough with them. He made them work really, really hard. He thought if he made them work really, really hard, it might make them worn out. They would just die, but it didn't work. And he made them make bricks and work hard in the fields. And the masters over them were mean with them and tough and beat them sometimes. And it didn't stop God's people from growing and growing and growing. So then he had a second plan. He said, I'll go talk to the ladies who help those women have babies. Their names are Shifra and Pua. So he calls Shifra and Pua in and he says, this is what I want you to do. When uh, an Israelite woman goes to have a baby, if it is a girl baby, let it live. But if it's a boy baby, as soon as it's born, kill it. So Shifra and Pua left, and they had a big decision to make. Were they going to obey the king, or were they going to do what they knew was right? Well, they did what they knew was right. They didn't kill any babies. So what happened was, the king called them in again and said, now why is it that you haven't killed any boy babies? And they said, oh, those women, they have their babies so fast we don't even get there in time. And so that didn't work. So the king had a third way to get rid of the Israelites. He said, from now on, if your baby is a girl, you can let it live. But if it's a boy, you have to take that baby down and throw him in the river so he dies. What? This is craziness. That's what he said to do. So there was a family in, in Egypt at that time, and the daddy's name was Amram. Mommy was Jochebed. The big sister was Miriam, and the big brother was Aaron. And the mommy became pregnant, and she was carrying the baby in her womb. And all the time she was carrying the baby, they were talking to that baby just like we do and touching mommy's belly to feel the baby and thinking, what's going to happen when this baby is born? I hope it's a girl. I hope it's a girl. But when the baby was born, it was a boy. And they knew that the king said, you have to take this baby and throw it in the river. But they didn't obey the king. They kept that little boy alive. They kept him in the house. And the mommy gave him mommy's milk. And the kids were very good at keeping him quiet. Shh, shh, shh. So nobody even knew they had a baby in their house until he was three months old. And by the time he was three months old, he was making so much noise that they knew they were going to get caught. So the mommy did some thinking. And she made a basket 
a wicker basket, kind of like a, a wooden basket that your mom would put the laundry in. And she makes that basket, and then she covered the outside of it with tar and pitch. That's like that sticky stuff they put on the road to make the water not go down in the cracks on the road. She covered the outside of it. Just the same stuff as they put on Noah's Ark to keep it from sinking. So she covered it with tar and pitch, and she took that basket, and she carried it down to the Nile River, and where the reeds were coming up, she put that basket right down there in those high weeds, and she said to Miriam, now your job is to keep an eye on that basket and see what happens. So she put the baby in that little basket. I don't know, some pictures make you think that it was a lid over it. I'm not sure if there was or not. So she had that baby down there in that basket. And really soon after that, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to take her bath. And she heard the baby cry. And she said to her maid, go get that little basket. Let's see what's in there. And she carried it over and she opened it up and there was the baby. Oh, she says, oh, I always wanted a baby. I want this baby right now. Well, Miriam, who had been watching all along, came close and she said, how are you going to feed that baby? Do you want me to find a mom who has mommy milk that could nurse that baby for you? And she says, oh, yes, that's a good idea. So Miriam ran home as fast as she could, and she got her mommy, Jochebed. And she said, she brought her back, and she said to Pharaoh's daughter, this woman has mommy milk. She could feed the baby for you. And Pharaoh's daughter said, good idea. Do you know what? I will pay you money to feed my baby boy. And so Jochebed got to take the baby back home home and feed him until he was big enough to go and live with Pharaoh's daughter. And then he lived in the palace like as Pharaoh's grandson and was very protected and got a great education and everything was good for them. And Pharaoh's daughter named that baby Moses because she took him out of the water. That's what Moses means. And now we're starting the Moses stories. And there's a lot of Moses stories. But this is the very first one. And the memory verse that I chose is, Thanks, you go thanks, Thanks be to God for his, his unspeakable gift. It means... This gift is so wonderful, you can't even find words to, to say what it is. Now let's think about it again. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. It comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 15. And the gift in this story was the baby Moses. He was a gift to his parents, even though they thought it'd be better if they had a girl. He was a gift to Pharaoh's daughter, who really wanted a baby to be her son. And he was a gift to all of the Israelite people, because God's going to use him in a mighty way with the Israelites. But there is another baby that was born, who is an unspeakable gift too. He was born at Christmas. Do you know his name? Jesus, right? Let's thank God for him. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Dear Father God, we thank you so much that you gave Jesus, that you gave Jesus as a baby to die for us. Thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen.